Chelsea, what's the matter? <gasps> Your Majesty, for Chelsea, this is the day when her tears of sorrow have changed to tears of joy. Although she is fearful of your vow to defeat the evil monster Valenese, she truly is happy on this her wedding day. The new queen would give her life for you. She loves you so. I couldn't be happier. I love SRPGs. Strategy role-playing games, tactical role-playing games, whatever you want to call them, I absolutely love them. Shining Force was the game that made me choose getting a Sega Genesis over a Super Nintendo. And here in 2019, literally decades since the last Shining Force release, I am hungrily devouring Fire Emblem, Three Houses, and getting ready to date Dorothea because gay girls are best girls. Over the last 25 years of playing games, I have played through an absolutely gigantic pile of SRPGs. Some of these games are well known and some of them are pretty damn obscure. I've played your Shining Forces, your Fire Emblems, and your Final Fantasy Tactics, but I have also played Dark Wizard. Created by Human Interface Communications, HIC Co. Limited, for the Japanese Mega CD in 93 or 94 in North America, with a story written by Kenji Tirada, the same man who wrote the scenarios for Final Fantasy 1 through 3 and the executive producer for Final Fantasy 7, Dark Wizard is a dense and challenging strategy RPG. Already having the incredible Shining Force series under their wing and at the height of its success, Sega opted to try and create a second first party SRPG to fly alongside their flagship SRPG series. Being a new IP released on the Sega CD, Dark Wizard was ultimately fated to be forgotten, but that forgotten game is remarkably deep and exciting. Dark Wizard's gameplay is delightfully dense. You begin by choosing one of four unique leaders, Prince Armor the Ninth, Knight Leader Robin, Dark Sorceress Crystal, and Aemon the fucking Vampire. You then get to choose between easy and normal difficulty, but just choose easy because both settings are actually pretty hard and normal is really hard. The lion's share of the gameplay takes place on an overhead hex-based map, and here you are tasked with defeating enemy units and taking their towns and strongholds. Along with your ruler, you can also hire and summon units. The hire command allows you to use gold to recruit humanoid units, and the summon command allows you to use MP to recruit monster units. Hired units have a salary though, so don't go too wild. Many of these units can later be promoted to stronger classes once leveling up sufficiently. Unit alignment can also affect what classes they can promote into. And yeah, each of the four rulers have some of their own unique hirelings and monsters. Holy cow. Battles are turn-based with all of the player's units acting and then all of the enemy units acting. On the player's turn, you can move your units on the massive battlefields, engage enemy units by attacking them or assaulting them with magic, you can hire and summon units, search for hidden items and locales, and you can even rest and regain some of your lost HP. Rulers can visit towns to purchase items, drink, and talk to NPCs. The main ideal in battle is to defeat the enemy leader and conquer their castle, thusly opening up more of the map for you to explore. This game is amazingly huge. You can easily drop hundreds of hours on a single playthrough. The story of Dark Wizard starts 300 years before the game begins. The peaceful kingdom of Cheshire is thrown into chaos when Zahar, the king's high priest, stabs him in the back and uses dark magic to summon the evil god Arlamin. The priest knew that summoning Arlamin would also cause Sabrina, the goddess of light, to arrive on the mortal plane to confront her wicked counterpart. 
Arlemin being stronger than Sabrina meant that it should be an easy fight for the baddies, but uh oh, the anti-fascists are here. Sabrina enlisted the help of warrior beauty armor and swordsman Gilliam. None of these games are written down anywhere, so these are all just approximations. And after a long battle, the good guys win. Yay. Peace then reigns for 300 years, and whoops, that's when the game actually starts, and Dark Wizard, late title card. The next scenes play out differently depending on which ruler you choose, but the main premise is the Dark Wizard, Velenese, is going to resurrect Arlemin again to do all of the baddie stuff that Zohar couldn't accomplish. Armor the Ninth. Amr the Ninth is probably the correct choice of ruler as he is the son of the king and descendant of the armor that banished Arlemin 300 years ago. After the king dies, he takes his place as the rightful new ruler, but death once again strikes as the new queen Chelsea is murdered by Velenese on their wedding day. The newly crowned widower king declares war and marches on Velenese for revenge. Robin the Knight. Robin is the leader of Armor's Cavalry and one of the most feared swordswomen in the land. Before Armor dies, he decides that Robin should take his place as king. I guess he realized what a dork his son was. While her backstory isn't as exciting as the other characters, she is a very competent unit on the battlefield. Crystal the Sorceress. Crystal is a dark sorceress and my favorite character. Crystal's story is another tale of revenge. Her and a warrior named Marcus sell their souls to a demon to gain dark powers that they plan on using to avenge the murder of Crystal's sister, who was also Marcus's lover, by the hands of Armor the Eighth. After ambushing and killing the king, Velenese appears before Crystal and tells her that he kill her sister as a means to manipulate her into killing the king for him. Afterwards, Crystal uses her newfound dark powers to take control of Cheshire's armies and march on Velenese. Like I said, she's definitely the coolest character. Haemon the Vampire Aemon is a vampire who wants to rule the kingdom. He uses his dark vampiric magic to kill Armor the Eighth and shapeshift into his form with intent of taking over the world. That's it. A little generic, but not as boring as Robin's story. At least Aemon is a vampire. Dark Wizard was released 26 years ago on a short-lived and underperforming game console. The game story began and ended there. There are no sequels, there are no remakes, there are no ports. If you want to legally play this game, you need to hunt down a Sega CD and the game on disc. This incredible game is lost to time, but if you love tactics games and you have the means to hunt it down and play it, do it. Cheshire won't see peace without you. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. I absolutely love this game as a kid, and I hope a few of you will track it down and give it a play. There are a number of great games that were released on the Sega CD that Sega should do something with. Anyway, if you liked the video, please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell. If you are interested in helping us financially, go check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Lord Gaylord. Furthermore, if you want something back, Go check out our band camp. We just launched a new line of Weeb Trash shirts, including a new version of True Black Metal Weeaboo Trash, along with Death Metal Weeb and Doom Metal Weeb alternative versions. That's at Bandcamp. No, hang on. Blackanddeath.bandcamp.com. That's the URL. Anyway, hey, that's it. See you next time, my lovelies. Bye bye.